الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم My dear sweet Islamic brothers, let's recite through the park upon the beloved and blessed Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam if you recite after me As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulullah As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Habib Allah As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabi Allah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nur Allah The excellence of conveying through the park the Prophet of mankind, the peace of our hearts and mind, the most generous and kind, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has narrated, anyone who recites durood upon me three times in the day and three times in the night due to love and devotion for me, Allah azza wa jal will forgive the sins he committed during that day and that night. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam my dear sweet Islam brothers and viewers, as you remember, just a few days ago, uh, we posted a video regarding the virtues of wudu. And then we covered that topic and then we did the manners of entering the washroom and we've also covered that topic. Today's topic, alhamdulillah, is the method of wudu with the accordance of teachings of Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmallahu ta'ala, from Laws of Salah, page number five. So the first thing we need to do uh, is purchase something like a stool or a chair. It is mustahab to sit on an elevated place facing the direction of Qibla. Thus if it's easy enough at home uh, to face the direction of Qibla because otherwise the sinks might be the opposite direction it might be a bit difficult to do this. For those who can uh, purchase a bath stool uh, or any other uh, stool that can provide elevation to sit comfortably to make wudu. Otherwise standing, you're not in a comfortable position to make wudu. To make intention for wudu is sunnah. Okay, so intention means to intend by the heart verbally. Intention is preferable provided the same is present in the heart. Therefore make the intention as I am performing wudu in order to fulfill the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal. Okay, and to attain purity. Recite Bismillah as it is also a sunnah. Rather say Bismillahi walhamdulillah. But remember, recite this outside the washroom. Before you go to make wudu, make your intention then. And then uh, recite Bismillahi walhamdulillah. Otherwise, at home, our bath and toilet are in the same place. And obviously, we should not be reciting any invocation in the washroom. Uh, obviously there's najasid there or in places like this so the next step is uh, so the person who recites bismillahi walhamdulillah the virtues of this is that angels will continue to write good deeds as long as as long as one stays in the state of wudu subhanallah so let's uh, recite this bismillahi walhamdulillah Okay, I'm going to practice this and inshallah I'm going to implement it uh, in your wudus. So wash both hands is the next step. So wash both hands up to the wrist. Okay, three times and afterwards do khilal. Okay, intermix the fingers of both hands to dampen the gaps of the fingers with the tap closed. Remember, try to close the tap and do not waste water. Okay, and if we make this habit with our children, when they grow up and when they go towards the masajid and when the taps are flowing, we have to be careful because otherwise this is donated money, charity towards the masjid. Uh, and what happens is uh, we are wasting water and we could be accounted for this on the day of resurrection. So we have to be careful. So now use a miswak three times in the right, left and upper teeth and after, after each cycle rinse the miswak. So wash the miswak. Do the right first, then the bottom right, then the left, and then bottom left. Okay. Hajatul Islam, Imam Muhammad Ghazali, uh, Rahamallahu ta'ala anhu says, whilst using a miswak, make the intention to clean the mouth for the, for the recitation of the glorious Quran, 
for the zikr and the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. Remember when you make good intentions, inshallah, you are being rewarded for this. And you never know because of one good intention, you might be able to enter paradise. Now rinse the mouth three times with handfuls of water, closing the tap each time. Okay? And make sure uh, when you take the water in, that the water reaches all parts of the mouth. Okay? And if you're fasting, do not gargle. Okay? But if you're not fasting, gargle. Uh, take the water at the back, let a bit of water go down to your, uh, to your halak. And inshallah, make sure you use it as a mouthwash that it flows all the way around and then you spit out. But if you're fasting, don't gargle. Okay? So, now we move on to uh, the nose part. So, take the water into your nose by your right hand. Okay? Sniff the water. So, take a handful of water. Sniff it. Take it to the soft part of the bone. Uh, but if you're fasting, be careful not to sniff too hard. Or to actually just take it at the bottom area. Because otherwise if it goes up, it will go at the back of your halak. And this will invalidate your fast if you're fasting. So be careful. And then use your small finger uh, to clean any uh, dirt from the nose by taking them out. And inshallah, do this three times. Okay. The next part is, uh, now we're going to clean uh, the face, the whole face. Now the definition of face Wash the face is from the where the hair starts and at the bottom of the chin. Okay, so you're gonna flow all the water around, you're not gonna splash. If you start splashing, it's not really gonna go everywhere. So, earlobe to earlobe, so make sure you get the water in your hands, right? And you actually wipe over, kind of. So, make sure water flows every part of your face. If any part is missed, your wudu will not be complete. Remember that. So try to do this uh, by closing the tap each time. You don't need that much water, uh, but have a handful of water and basically to go around, okay? So make sure you, and if you've got a beard, to do the khilal of the beard, okay? So just pass some water on bottom of the, uh, the chin here. Uh, when thing is, so it's the bottom of the chin, where the facial line is. So this is the facial line, as you can see, and that's the bottom of the chin. So make sure water goes under if you've got beard do hilal of the beard as well okay so moving on uh, to the uh, arms now washing the right arm first from the tips of the finger now, a lot of people say from the wrist is actually from the tip of the finger right up to the elbow is fards okay but it's mustahab to wash halfway up so do the right first but the method of washing we waste a lot of water and some people wash like this and what happens is water flows from the top and the water has not gone down here. So this is a dangerous way of doing it. Because these are one of the fries of wudu. If this is missed, then what's going to happen? Your wudu is not going to be valid. So wash the water like this. One, two, right? And then three. And do the same for that side. But wash up to there is mustahab. Now we're going to learn how to do the masa of the head. So make sure you're turning the top off each time. And when you do this, so the method, I'm just going to take my uh, imam sharif off. You're going to join three fingers. Make sure you put water in the hand. You, tip, you, you switch the top off. Join the last three fingers. Right, Pass the three fingers all the way to the back. Right, And then use your palmy aspect of the hands to bring it back. So now I've used the last three fingers and I've used my palms. Okay, So I brought it back. Okay, And then now I use the, the index finger and the thumbs to actually clean the back of my ears, okay? And then the back of the hands are still wet, so I do the right first, and then the left. The next step, after the masa, so inshallah, now wash both feet three times. First the right, and then the left, beginning from the toes up to the top of the ankles. It is mustahab to wash up to halfway up the shin, okay? To do hilal between the fingers of both feet is sunnah. The tap should be kept turned off during hilal. So whenever you're intermixing the finger, the small left hand finger inside the toes, make sure the tap is closed and you're not wasting water while you're doing this. It is mustahab method is to start doing hilal from the little toe of the right foot right, and bring it from the right towards the left. 
ان شاء الله حاجت الاسلام امام محمد غزالی علیہ رحمۃ اللہ قوی سیز وائل واشنگ ایچ اوگن ون شوڈ ہوپ دیٹ دا سنس آف دیٹ اوگن آ بینگ واشڈ وے صلی علیہ الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ان شاء اللہ ناؤ وی ول لسن ٹو سم ورچوز لسن ٹو سم دعاز آفٹر وضو سو میک شیور ونس یو کمپلیٹیڈ یور وضو لیو دا واش روم یوزنگ یور رائٹ فٹ اینڈ دین ریسائٹ ود درود شریف دی دعا آفٹر وضو وچ از اللہ جعنی مین طوابین و جعنی مین المتطرین دا ٹرانسلیشن او اللہ ز وجل میک می امنگس دوز ہو ریپینٹ ابنڈنٹلی اینڈ میک می امنگس دوز ہو اسٹے کلین اینڈ دس از ان پیج سیون آف لوز آف صلاح یو کین اچیو دس دعا اینڈ یو کین میمورائز اٹ ون حدیف مینشنس If a person does wudu properly and reads Kalima Shihadat, okay, Kalima is Shihadat, all eight ports of heaven are open for him and he may enter through anyone he desires. Subhanallah. The excellence of reciting Surah Qadr after wudu. Uh, one sacred hadith mentioned if a person reads Surah Qadr once after wudu, he will be amongst the Siddiqeen and if he reads it twice, He will be amongst the shohada and if he reads it three times Allah will keep him with his prophets alayhi salam on the day of judgment. If a person looks up to the sky after wudu and reads Surah Qadr inshaAllah his eyesight will never become weak. Subhanallah. Remember there's four fraid which we have discussed okay very quickly. Uh, one of them is the face. Okay, the definition of face is from the hairline where the hairline grows to the bottom of the chin. You know, your facial line here. And then you see the, uh, the earlobe to earlobe. You need to wash this properly. If it's any part that has been missed, the wudu will not be valid. And number two, washing the arms from the fingertips up to the elbow. But halfway up is mustahab. So make sure you're washing in this method. Okay. Right? And not like this. Okay? And moistening the quarter of the head, which we've shown you the practical way. And then washing both feet, including the ankles. And mustahab is washing above the ankles, up to the shin. So may Allah Azza wa Jal give his ability to act upon what has been heard. And last and final, I'd just like to uh, mention, washing an organ means flowing at, of at least two drops of water on each part of that organ. So remember, two drops. There's one drop going on or less amount of water, then still that wudu will not be valid, okay? So it needs to be more. It needs at least two drops of water. That's the least minimum, okay? If the organ is simply moistened by rubbing a wet hand over it, or if only one drop of water flows over a section of it, then it will, be, it will not be considered washed and the wudu or ghusl will not be valid in this case. So like I said, may Allah Azzawajal give us the ability to perform wudu correctly and if our wudu is correct then inshallah our namaz will be accepted inshallah otherwise uh, if our wudu is not correct because uh, this is the key for our namaz and we need to perform our wudu correctly inshallah and if I made any mistakes uh, in during the, the wudu practical and trying to explain I ask Allah to forgive me but I ask I urge Islamic brothers to actually download this book from uh, the website or to purchase it from the maktab and have a read of it inshallah and uh, try to practice this and inshallah you'll be able to uh, implement this in your life sallu alal habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam